Okay. Um, so the restoration period. The restoration period is the period after the Puritan interregnum, after the Puritan rule, the restoration of monarchy. Charles II came to power. Good. In that age, Milton died. So the Puritan interregnum, that means the interim rule of the Puritans. Regnum is rule. The Puritan interregnum ended and monarchy was restored. Charles II, the son of Charles I, came to power. Charles II was handsome, popular, cynical, unprincipled. He was immoral. And he had a luxuriant, hedonistic life. Hedonistic means pleasure loving. And he, was, he came to be called the Merry Monarch. Charles came and reopened the theaters. All the theaters were closed in 1642. Charles reopened it. The floodgates of theater were opened and this led to so many plays being enacted immorally. Charles also restored Church of England as national church, but he had some Catholic interests. That came later, no problem. The church and state were deeply intertwined at this time. Church and state are intertwined. Church is uh, interfering in political affairs. There were two political factions, the Whigs and the Tories. Two political factions, the Whigs and the Tories. The Whigs are the liberals. The Tories are the conservatives. Did you understand? Look at the handsome Charles sitting on his throne. Very handsome, isn't he? <laughs> at this time, oh, there were many calamities. And Charles did not even take care of his people. There were many wars with the Dutch. The Dutch people were attacking. 1665 66 was the time of the Great Plague. The Great Plague broke out once again. Many people died. And there was the Great Fire of London. In the Great Fire of London, at least 13,000 buildings were destroyed. People are saying only six people died. And this Great Fire of London burned for five days. It was very disastrous. The merry monarch was having fun. He did not pay attention to the people. Charles favored a policy of religious tolerance, even though he secretly favored Catholicism. Charles secretly favored Catholicism, but he acted like he was very tolerant to all religions. The Test Act of 1673 was passed. Test Act, Matlab, all civil and military officers had to take communion with the Anglican Church. Anglicanism is dominant at that time. And everybody has to take communion with the Anglican Church. That was good. Meanwhile, in 1678, the Catholics are planning to kill the king. This idea spread. This is called the Popish Plot. At that time, everybody thought that Catholics are going to kill the king. Titus Oates is going to assassinate Charles II. Everybody started hating the Catholics. There was anti-Catholic hysteria. Are the Popish plot turned out to be fictitious. Kuchineda, it was only a rumor. Lekin, this fanned anti-Catholic hysteria. If anti-Catholic hysteria means against Catholics, Anglicans hate them. If anti-Catholic hysteria was a fire, the Popish plot fanned it. All this led to exclusion crisis. What was the exclusion crisis? I will tell you. What is exclusion crisis? Dekho, there are the Whigs. Okay? Whigs are the liberals. 
then there are the tories tories are the conservatives liberals conservatives theek hai the liberals are the landed gentry and the puritans nahi no, para puritans nahi no. landed gentry bhi nahi bolungi uh, the newly rich i will say the newly rich mostly and the tories are the aristocrats theek hai now charles is of course on this side charles the second is on this side this charles had a brother james brother james charles's brother is james charles had many illegitimate children he did not have legitimate heirs because his wife did not give birth to children but he had many children by his mistresses so there is duke of monmouth that is also one james duke of monmouth on this side and the wigs under shaftsbury the wigs leader is shaftsbury shaftsbury and the wigs wanted monmouth to be the successor to charles charles wanted his own brother charles and the tories wanted his own brother james to be the king clear everybody the wigs wanted uh, monmouth the illegitimate son monmouth to be the king the tories wanted the brother james to be the king iska problem ye hai ki james is pro catholic these charles james they are all catholics secretly or not so not so secretly did you understand and wigs are protestants wigs are all protestants they don't want catholics to rule now the wigs said duke of monmouth should be the successor the tories said no the brother james should be the successor because this brother james is royal blood ye to royal blood hai na sab log ye to illegitimate hai tories did not want illegitimate children but the wigs did not want catholics this is called exclusion crisis the wigs under shaftsbury made one exclusion bill exclusion bill exclusion bill mein kya tha catholics should not succeed to the english throne that is exclusion bill the catholics should not succeed to the english throne they decided and they tabled the exclusion bill in the house of lords and the house of commons there are two it is bicameral parliaments there are two houses in the parliament like there is in india this is the house of lords and this is the house of commons maine bola na they are common people newly rich people house of lords and the house of commons exclusion bill is first tabled in house of commons niche ka house there it got passed next it goes to the house of lords there it is defeated therefore ye brother james came to power as james the second and monmouth trying to uh, defeat james that is called monmouth rebellion this duke of monmouth trying to defeat james that is called monmouth rebellion will you remember monmouth rebellion exclusion crisis dekho 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 exclusion crisis dekho i have to delete all this will you take a screenshot or something if you want because in the next slide i will again say these things deleting tadadang
Now, Charles the second, that story I have given here. Jo abhi abhi maine bataya, whatever I said just now, I am explaining here. Charles the second had no legitimate heirs. Legitimate heirs, no. His wife Catherine is having several miscarriages. The next in line to the throne was his Catholic brother James. James is the next in line to the throne. Two political factions emerged at this time. The Whigs and the Tories. Whigs are liberals. They wanted to exclude the brother James from inheritance. And the Tories are the conservatives. The Tories supported James's accession. Are you following? If you're not paying attention, you cannot follow. Tories did what? Tories are conservatives. They wanted the brother to come to power because brother is royal blood. Whigs said no Catholics. He did, they did not support the brother. They wanted Duke of Monmouth to come to power. And the Whig party is founded by Anthony Ashley Cooper, the first Earl of Shaftesbury. Anthony Ashley Cooper, the first Earl of Shaftesbury. He was one of the 12 members who had gone to Dutch Republic to bring back Charles II. Charles II came to England. Restoration happened because of this man. But after that, this man turned against Charles. Now he is against Charles' brother. He's saying no need of brother Charles, brother James coming to power. We need Monmouth. Shaftesbury is supporting Monmouth. Clear everybody? The Whigs supported the succession of James Scott, Duke of Monmouth. They were against brother James. The Whigs supported Duke of Monmouth, who was the eldest of Charles's illegitimate sons. Charles got bohat sare illegitimate sons. Te. In Wikipedia, illegitimate sons of Charles ek entry hai. Hmm. So many. This is the eldest. This is James, the second brother of Charles. Ah, in 1679, the Whigs under the Earl of Shaftesbury and the Duke of Buckingham, there are Whigs, uh, the Liberals, under the Earl of Shaftesbury, Duke of Buckingham. These are the two uh, leaders of the Whigs. They introduced the exclusion bill in the House of Commons. The Earl of Shaftesbury and the Duke of Buckingham introduced what is called the exclusion bill, meaning we should exclude the Catholics from succession. The king interfered because the king wanted his brother. The king interfered, dissolved the parliament. Who is here speaking against my brother? King dissolved the parliament. Imprisoned Shaftesbury. On charges of high treason. Khabardar jo mere brother ke khilaf bolega. Imprison him. <laughs> Charles II made order. And Earl of Shaftesbury put in prison. Why did Charles put him in prison? To prevent the passing of exclusion bill. Exclusion bill jo hai. Which prevented Catholics from coming to power. If it is passed, there will be problem. So Charles send Shaftesbury to prison. But Shaftesbury is rich man, powerful man. Later, Shaftesbury was released from prison. All the Whigs wore a medal. You know, all the Whigs wore a medal. Supporting Shaftesbury. On one side, it was Shaftesbury's picture. On the other side, it was the picture of London. A medal everybody wore. Dryden, who was a Tory, made fun of this medal in the medal. Dryden wrote Absalom and Akitophel, the medal, Mac Fleck. No, all these three satires he wrote, making fun of the Whigs in the exclusion crisis. Shaftesbury and his Whigs are wearing this medal. <laughs> Dryden attacked them. And this bill, exclusion bill, was passed in the House of Commons. House of Commons is ordinary people's house. Whigs are majority there. This bill was passed in House of Commons. 
However, it was defeated in the House of Lords. Jaha Tories ka majority hai. In the House of Lords, upper, upper house. Tang! Defeated. Clear, everyone? Now, Charles ruled without the parliament for the rest of his reign. Not because parliament did not support him, but because he dissolved the parliament, did not call a meeting of the parliament after that. Charles taught parliament a lesson. He ruled without the parliament. One day, tarang, suddenly he died. At that time, everybody thought, is he poisoned? Is he killed? But kuch nahi tha. Dekho, isne kya kya? On his deathbed. Look at what he did. On his deathbed, he converted to Catholicism. And he converted to Catholicism on his deathbed. When he died, what did he leave? So many problems. So many mistresses. So many illegitimate sons. All these were there when he died. <laughs> did you understand? And then his brother James came to power. I, I my hair, hair is dressed like this today to show solidarity with James. My hair and James hair, don't know it, Jessa. <laughs> James the second came to power. <laughs> James the second of England. He also ruled Wales, Ireland. He was James the seventh of Scotland. Yad hai, James the sixth of Scotland was James the first of England. Now this guy is James the second of Scotland. He is James the seventh of England. Clear everyone? England and Scotland were two separate countries at this time. In James's time, England, Scotland. Though no, usko rule karna pada. Both England and Scotland, he is ruling. Sometimes England, sometimes Scotland. But in 1707, in the time of Queen Anne, Queen Anne is James II's daughter. In the time of Queen Anne, England and Scotland became united into one kingdom. 1707, act of union between England and Scotland. Tarang! One kingdom in here. James II was the second son of Charles I, who was beheaded. And James II was the brother of Charles II. He was pro-French and pro-Catholic. Pro means support of. He supported French. He supported the Catholics. Though no, both English people hated. English people did not like French. English people did not like the Catholics. James was friendly with both. They, English people themselves, the uh, Tories themselves, brought him to power. Now Tories are thinking, Are kar nahi karna tha ye. This man is creating problems. Who? James II. At that time, in 1685, Duke of Monmouth started rebellion. Monmouth rebellion. Attempting to overthrow James. Monmouth rebellion ho gaya. And James revoked the test act. Koi zarurat nahi. Anglican church se baptism karne ka. Don't take baptism from, from Anglican church. We support Catholicism. That is how James is. James did not want Officials to take communion with Anglican Church. Did you understand? And James revoked, matlab vapas, test act revoked. And maybe he wanted to become an absolute monarch. Maybe he wanted to reintroduce Catholicism. Because in two, three years, a, yo, a son was born to him. In the beginning, he had two daughters. They were already married to Protestant kings. Now a son is born to him. English people are like, no, we don't want that son to grow up and rule us. Because he is Catholic. So the English people just planned to throw him out of power. 
James heard that there is going to be rebellion. He remembered his own father's headless corpse. Beheaded ho gaya tha na uska pa, ba, ba, Charles the first. James quietly escaped. That is called bloodless revolution. Ye James. Glorious revolution of 1688. The Protestant nobles called on, called on, matlab, visited James' son-in-law. That son-in-law was Protestant. Nephew bhi wo. William of Orange. His wife was James's daughter, Mary. William of Orange and Mary came from Netherlands. Oh. James saw this without fighting. He escapes. But over the next 50 years, James' supporters attempted to capture the kingdom of England back from these people. They started rebellions, James' followers. These are called Jacobite rebellions. Jacob is James in Latin. Jacob, Jacobus is Latin for James. There were two main Jacobite rebellions. Jacob's or James's followers attacking England. Two main were there. 1715, 1745. In 1715, James's son, who was called Old, Old Pretender, led the war against England. Old Pretender, James's son. In the second 1745 rebellion, Young Pretender, that is James's grandson, led the war against England. Young Pretender and Old Pretender. Did you understand? This is uh, the story of Jacobite rebellions. Clear, everyone? Did you understand? Now, after James's glorious revolution happened, William of Orange and Mary came to power. They formed a dual monarchy, joint monarchy. Shuruat may they passed the Bill of Rights, which supported the Protestants. James's time was favorable to Catholics. Now Protestants are supported. And Bill of Rights gave more power to Parliament. The king can never again dissolve the Parliament whenever he wants. That rule is passed. Did you understand? William of Orange and Mary. Ayyo. Kuch saal baak kya hua dekho? Mary the second died. William cried. Then he continued to rule. And then William also died. Then Mary's sister Queen Anne came to power. So, <coughs> James the second followed by William of Orange and Mary. Mm -hmm. After that, Queen Anne. Queen Anne, will you remember? In the time of Queen Anne, kya wa tha? England, Scotland, United. 1707, Act of Union between England and Scotland. Is that clear? <laughs> Unmuting you. Please speak. Or chat. <coughs> Sorry. Any doubt? Nobody will speak. Eh? Okay, I will make you speak. Is everybody sleeping? Hello? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, I know you will unmute and say no, ma'am. That is why I said that. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma am I audible? Yes. 
Ma'am, I wanted to know, like, uh, can you tell the difference between Catholicism, Anglicanism, Protestantism, and one more is there? I'm forgetting. But no, I won't. <laughs> okay. Why did I say I won't? Tell me that. I should Google. Huh? These are the simple, silly topics. We can Google it. Not only because of that, at least four or five times I've already said in class. Get one card. Catholics are the main Christians. They became corrupt. Then Protestants, another church came into being. Suppose, imagine a family, then you will understand. Imagine Mom. one big joint family. One grandmother and grandfather, they have many children. They all form one family. Okay? And there are lots of problems in that family. So some people I'm talking about my grandparents, okay? My grandparents, big family, rich family, but there were lots of problems. So my father, me, my brother, my mother, we all fought against our grandparents and formed another family. Did you understand? Within my family, my brother is so strict. He does not enjoy life. He is against us also because he is thinking we are too easy easy going. He's so strict. He's a Puritan. And when we got married and had children, etc., many, 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 many small, small families formed inside our Protestant family. Inside Catholicism also, our cousins and uncles, aunties, all their families are also different, different denominations. Did you understand? Last time in, in the coming month, I'm saying this. I will not say this again for one month, okay? सब लोग चुप हो गए क्यों? ठीक है मैं भी चुप हो जाती हूँ। I think that is the fashion here, keeping quiet. No ma'am, we are admiring the beauty of the king and queen. Oh, मैं तो एक यहाँ बैठी हूँ। You are seeing me in front of you, and you are admiring beauty of king and queen. Let me quickly change the slide. हाँ Muting you all. Muting you. <laughs> okay. The French connection. King Charles and his companions. Yo. I'm making Medhavi co-host. King Charles II and his companions had spent their exile in France and they brought back every admiration for French things. French actresses, French food, French dance, French clothing, French everything. The restoration period came under the compelling influence of French classicism in art, philosophy, literature, theatre and social behaviour. Whereas the Italian influence had been dominant in the Elizabethan period. This was a period of classicism in France. Classicism means clarity, lucidity, vivacity, reason, all these things, correctness, elegance, finish, all these things began to be practiced. And what is the Baroque? The Baroque is a style in art architecture, music, and literature 
the baroque was not actually a style in england it was a style primarily in the european continents the baroque was a style in the european continent bernini one man was very important in baroque the baroque captured the physical tensions of dynamic movement in painting and sculpture in painting and sculpture physicality is the movement ah oh, like this ah oh, like this baroque painting and architecture always caught people like this never like this like a passport photo never tha kabhi nahi tha barok <laughs> passport photo like is medieval or renaissance barok is action photo the word comes from the portuguese word baroco meaning rough pearl the english barok is most associated with the restoration period and it also marked the end of the renaissance look at the ecstasy of saint teresa sculpture by bernini this is the saint patrick cathedral i think one cathedral baroque restoration prose the age witnessed the birth of modern prose also in this age there was the birth of modern prose dryden wrote critical prose Romances were written by women like Margaret Cavendish. Margaret Cavendish wrote *The Blazing World*. It is considered a reply to Bacon's *New Atlantis*. Afra Ben wrote *Urunoko* or *The Royal Slave*. And during this time, Restoration drama developed. Listen, everybody. <clears throat> restoration drama showed upper class people. the courtly people restoration drama showed the rise of the courtly ideal as well as the fall when middle class came into being there was the fall of the courtly ideal as also restoration drama did not represent any wide or deep current in english life restoration drama did not represent any deep or wide current in english life it was just superficial restoration drama had two predominant genres heroic drama and comedy of manners restoration drama had two genres heroic drama and comedy of manners comedy of manners is restoration comedy heroic drama was written by dryden the history play disappeared along with the disappearance of na national consciousness in drama at this time the history play was there that disappeared shakespeare had written many history plays remember it disappeared along with the disappearance of the national consciousness in drama now restoration theater drama and theater are two different things theater means performance drama is the text the theater and audience of the restoration period were very different from the elizabethan period in the elizabethan period yaad hai open theater round wooden roofless building hai na but yaha in restoration period indoor stage when you are sitting and watching the play you are looking at a room indoor stage it is called a picture frame stage because around the stage there is like this a frame <clears throat> and when you see the drama it looks like you are watching a moving painting like a movie inside the room big big walls big big uh, landscapes etc cannot be depicted in an indoor stage picture frame uske बाहर एक प्रोसीनियम आर्च था इनाइगो जोन्स इंट्रोड्यूस प्रोसीनियम आर्च ऑन द रेस्टोरेशन स्टेज ओनली बेडरूम सीन्स इंटीमेट सीन्स एट्सेट्रा कुड बी एनएक्टेड इन रेस्टोरेशन थिएटर एक्ट्रेसेस टुक फीमेल पार्ट्स एक्ट्रेसेस देर इज मूविंग सीनरी आर्टिफिशियल लाइटिंग 
the stage was dominated by spectacle. All these are very, very important. Spectacle on stage. Upper class people only could attend because when it is an indoor drama, theater ticket will be very high. Ticket will be very high. Did you understand? So only upper class people attended. Now, look at the restoration theater. Like this frame is there. When you sit here and look at it, it will look like a room. Restoration drama influences. The strongest influence was Ben Johnson. Restoration writers dandified. Dandified means made immoral. Johnson's moral comedies. Johnson wrote moral comedies. And uh, restoration comedies are an immoral version of Johnson's moral comedies. Clear everybody? Jacobian writers like Bowman and Fletcher were still popular and influential. Influence of French writers like Corneille, Moliere, Racine, it was also there. Comedies of Moliere were translated and adapted. Restoration writers admired and imitated French wit. French influence was there. And as a Spanish writer, Calderon was also popular. Restoration drama. Will you remember? Got it, everyone? Now, Samuel Butler. Samuel Butler wrote Hudibras. Hudibras is the first verse satire in English. This Butler was secretary to Duke of Buckingham. Duke of Buckingham was a Whig. Remember I told you, Earl of Shaftesbury and Duke of Buckingham, I said, Duke of Buckingham was a Whig. Even though Duke of Buckingham is a nobleman and he was the enemy of Dryden. Apart from Samuel Butler's Hudibras, there are also prose characters that he wrote, epigrammatic thoughts and poems, including The Elephant in the Moon. These are all other works of Samuel Butler. Hudibras is the first great verse satire in English, written in octosyllabic couplets. Its distinctive style has given rise to the name Hudibrastics. Hudibrastics. Hudibras is a biting satire on the Puritans and satire on the Commonwealth. Hudibras is written in favor of the king. Are you following me, everyone? Hudibras is royalistic against the Puritans. Clear? The name Hudibras might have come from Fairy Queen. Fairy Queen, Sir Hudibras has a squire, Ralpho. They are broadly modeled on Don Quixote and Sancho Panza. Don Quixote is a country gentleman who um, a country gentleman who won a sorry who read a lot of chivalric romances and he it got into his idea in into his head the idea that he is a knight he got a simpleton from the village Sanjo Panza Sanjo Panza is a fool simpleton and uh, he, like a madman, he, he began doing various things. This is Sir Hudibras. The end of the poem describes the activities of the Republicans just before the restoration and gives a study of the Earl of Shaftesbury. Shaftesbury is discussed in Hudibras also. Will you remember? There go, Hudibras and Ralpho. Hmm. 
Hudibras is going and thinking, I am a great man, I can do big things. Another writer of this time is Sir William Davenant. Sir William Davenant was a playwright, poet, theatre manager, one of the few personalities who were active before the Civil War and after the Restoration. William Shakespeare was his godfather. Maybe his biological father also. That means he is the illegitimate son of Shakespeare. In 1638, William Davenant was called Poet Laureate. At that year, in that year, Ben Johnson had died. William Davenant was a royalist in the Civil War. Works by Davenant, Gandhi Bert, The Siege of Rods. Gandhi Bert is an epic poem. The Siege of Rods is an opera. Tempest or the Enchanted Islands. Davenant and Dryden wrote. Tempest or the Enchanted Islands. It is an opera written by Dryden and Davenant. Davenant is satirized along with Dryden in the play, The Rehearsal. The Rehearsal is a play written by Dryden's enemies. Enemies like the Duke of Buckingham, George Villiers is his name, and Samuel Butler. They wrote the play Rehearsal against Dryden. Satirizing Dryden's heroic drama. Did you understand? Dave and is satirized along with Dryden in the play, the rehearsal. Clear everybody? Oh. I saw that, Medri, no problem. So guys, this is our net course, I am teaching the restoration period. And uh, next we have Thomas Killigrew. Thomas Killigrew was a playwright, theater manager. Playwright and theater manager. Okay. He was also a man who was Famous before the Civil War and after the Restoration. Clear, guys? So, Killigrew, like Dave Nance, is important in the Restoration period. And he's a royalist. Killigrew's famous play is the Parsons Wedding. Now, Parsons don't get married, do they? Parsons Wedding. I'm reminded of the Pope's Wedding by... Whom, who wrote the play Pope's Wedding? It is Edward Bond, the Pope's Wedding. In Edward Bond's Pope's Wedding, it means impossible events. And Thomas Killigrew wrote plays that are tragic comedies. Remember, guys, tragic comedy is a genre that is very famous in the 17th century. At the beginning of the 17th century, what happened? William Shakespeare wrote his tragic comedies, which are they? The romances. Then Bowman and Fletcher wrote Philaster. Are wa Thomas Killigrew bhi. Tragic comedies likha usne. Isn't it amazing? Tragic comedy, 17th century genre. And today I was teaching in RPSE course and KSX course, etc. Oh, yo, Dryden, Johnson, all of them support a tragic comedy, even though they are classical, neoclassical writers, neoclassical critics. All that I will teach you. Okay, now we are coming to John Dryden. Dear friends, are you enjoying the session? My mistake, I have gone YouTube live, but... Felix Kulpa, isn't it? Who said Felix Kulpa? Who said Felix Kulpa? It is Adam in Paradise Lost. Felix Kulpa means fortunate mistake. So today all of us are here live and in, in our class and YouTube people are also uh, watching us. But... After the class ends, I will change the settings 
So you two people, if you want to watch, watch now. Okay, guys. Because I can't change the setting in between. Uh, students of mine, do you have any doubts? Talk to me. Chat bhi karo. Chat is not disabled now. Are you enjoying? Thank you very much. Beautiful. Okay, so I will continue. Shall I teach you some more? Very good. Now, give me a minute. Zoom babies and YouTube babies. I will continue now. John Dryden was born in 1631. And he that was one year before Shakespeare's second folio. Shakespeare's first folio is 1623. Shakespeare's second folio is 1632. Arey, wow, that is the year 1632 is the year when John Milton got MA. Remember, I taught you this. So John Milton was studying in first MA when John Dryden was born. <laughs> Dryden was the most influential writer of the Restoration. He wrote in every form important to the period. Occasional verse, comedy, tragedy, heroic plays, odes, satires, everything he wrote. He never left any genre untouched. And he also wrote critical essays showing how to write this genre. He wrote essay on heroic play. He wrote essay on satire. At the time when people relied blindly on classical rules, everybody said classical rules are important. Classical, classical, classical. Dryden was a liberal neoclassicist. Dryden was not a strict neoclassicist. Islie, Dryden appreciated Shakespeare. Dryden appreciated Chaucer. Dryden appreciated tragic comedy. Tragic comedy is actually anti-classical, but Dryden appreciated it. And Dryden appreciated violation of unities. And Dryden is a liberal neoclassicist. As a critic, Dryden depended more on his native sensibility than rules. What are the rules that English people follow? What do English people like? That is what he followed rather than what are the rules? Dear friends, when you are a teacher, when you are a teacher teaching a diversity of students, you should be like Dryden. Do not just follow rules. Whatever your students want, whatever is best for them, whatever they like, be able, you should be able to adapt your teaching depending on your students. Will you remember that? You should be able to adapt your teaching depending on your students. Dryden depended more on native sensibility than rules. Are Dryden was the first comparative critic. He compared Homer and Shakespeare, Virgil and Johnson, Ovid and Chaucer. He compared English and French. So many comparisons he made. Dryden was the first comparative critic. Later on, Matthew Arnold developed the comparative criticism using touchstone method. Touchstone, you have to compare your writing with touchstones or excerpts from great writers. Clear everybody? Dryden was also the first historical critic. 
I gave you a quiz, I think, where I asked this question. Or otherwise, I, I have prepared it. I'll give it to you. Are you all doing your quizzes? Are you loving it? I will be sending you more. You should read more. We will do hundreds and hundreds of excellent quizzes. Then everything will become easy for you. At first, you think, I can't remember. There are so many points. But when we do more and more quizzes, you should do very carefully. Then we will be, you will be able to remember, okay? Dryden was the first historical critic. It means Dryden understood that every age has its own features. Just because in another age, writers wrote like that, we need not follow the same. We need not imitate. We can write in our own style. We can write in our own style. Dryden is the first historical critic. Just because our mothers did something, that doesn't mean we should also do the same thing. We can do whatever we want. We can do what is suitable for our age. Dryden said, Literature of a nation depends upon the temper, genius, and climate of the nation. And therefore, we should not judge the literature of one country with the rules of another. Did you understand? Every age has its own rules. That is the meaning. And he famously said, what pleased the Greeks would not satisfy an English audience. What pleased the Greeks would not satisfy an English audience. Okay. Take a quick look at Dryden's life. He studied at Cambridge, went to London. His first works were poems. At first he wrote some poems. And then he turned to drama. At first he wrote poetry, then he turned to drama. His first play was The Wild Gallant. His first successful play was The Indian Emperor. Are, this Indian Emperor is not about any Indian Emperor. It's about a Mexican Emperor, Red Indian Emperor. Will you remember? And Indian Emperor was co-authored with his brother-in-law, Robert Howard. Robert Howard is Kreitz. In of dramatic poesy, he is Kreitz, C R I T E S. Then, after 1676, Abhi, when you listen to me now, you are thinking, oh, it is so difficult, so many years, how will I remember? Relax, Mehuna. I will ask you questions, I will give you quizzes, I will help you remember. Don't you trust me? I have done this already, all the earlier chapters, you know well now. You will know even more. Don't worry. Okay, guys. So after 76, 1676, he began to write in blank verse. Before that, he wrote drama in heroic couplets. And at this time, he produced his best play based on Antony and Cleopatra. All for love or the world well lost. All for love or the world well lost. Based on Antony and Cleopatra, Yadrakos, 1678. Will you remember? 1678. And before that, 10 years before that, Dryden became the first official poet laureate. And he also became the historiographer royal. Dryden became historiographer royal. Will you remember? Big post Dryden held. When the civil war began. Are civil war to nahi hai abhi. Monmouth rebellion began. Exclusion crisis began. Mene bataya tha na? Exclusion crisis kya hai? When the exclusion crisis between the Whigs and the Tories began, Dryden wrote a series of satires, Absalom and Akitofel, The Medal and Mac Flecknoe. 
three satires tried and wrote. Absalom and Akitophel came in 1681. Three years after, all for love. Remember that. To this era also belongs the poem Religio Leci, 1682. 1682 was a year of medal and Matt Fleckno, also Religio Leci. Religio Leci, when he wrote, he's an Anglican. Dryden is at first an Anglican. Then he converted to Catholicism. When he is an Anglican, he wrote religio leci, supporting Anglicanism. Then he converted to Catholicism. And he wrote the hind and the panther, supporting Catholicism. Dryden kept changing like this. At first he supports this. Then he supports this. Then he supports this. Opportunistic. <laughs> Will you remember? At first, when I was in BA course, I studied. At first, Chota Sa Likha. Religious Lechi, two words. Uske baad bada sa, the hind and the bandar. Itna bada. 1682-1687. Will you remember, guys? How many of you are sleeping? Don't sleep. You are thinking. We are learning such serious things. And ma'am is making such a joke out of it. That is so bad. She does not understand the seriousness of Dryden. Are you feeling like that? We will talk about it in the break. Okay, guys. At this time, kya hua tha? Yaad hai? James II is a Catholic, okay? And he is in power. Dryden went and converted to Catholicism in order to please James in 1687. He converted. Nahi, 1686, he converted. Uske Turand Baad, James II lost power. In glorious revolution, he went to Scotland in 1688. Dryden Rehgea as a Catholic. He thought James will rule. So to please James, he converted. That was a wrong decision because James lost power in glorious revolution of 1688. And William of Orange and Mary came to power, dual monarchy, joined monarchy. And they were Protestants. Dryden lost all his offices. Jo officers uska tha? Poet laureate, historiographer royal, sab chala gaya. Yo, what is worse is his enemy Shadwell was given these posts. Shadwell, his enemy became poet laureate. Dryden zinda nahi rasaka, but he did not do anything. He just wrote other works. Such a shame, isn't it? A joke. In his later years, all his prose works, critical works were written. Okay, guys, talk to me. I'm going very slow now. Too slow, isn't it? No good. Guys, talk to me. Huh. Huh. Will you talk to me? Nobody will talk to me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Was Shadwell Dryden's enemy? Bilkul. Yes. Shaftesbury. Shadwell. Buckingham. All enemies of Dryden. Shaftesbury. Shadwell. Duke of Buckingham. Samuel Butler. All enemies of Dryden. Will you remember? Yes, ma'am. Guys, are you enjoying? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma we are enjoying. Not only Protestant, there were so many other differences. Political difference was the biggest, na? Yes. Are you? Tell me, everybody. 
isn't it becoming easier and easier in every class, every every week, every? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. At first, yes, so many things we studied. Yes, then slowly, slowly, they are becoming better, 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 easier, easier, easier. Hena, hena, hena. Abes, I thought Gushnu Sukta. You know, you the concepts are becoming crystal clear, ma'am. Ha, what did you say? The concepts are becoming crystal clear, ma'am, in each and every session. Thank you. Did you watch YouTube live last night? I was rapping. I became a rap star. <laughs> Absalom and Akitofel, I didn't even teach Absalom and Akitofel. Don't be impatient. Guidance poetry, I am only going to start. Why don't you open your encyclopedia and see? It is coming. Uh, at first, we imagine Dryden as an intellectual and opportunistic. I just didn't revise today's session. Mm, that is bad. In which works Dryden attacked Shadwell? I won't tell you. Just now I said, be patient. I have not even started teaching Dryden's poetry. Okay. Ekdam say in the beginning, before I teach, I can't teach everything. Only when I teach, I can teach everything. Relax. I will teach. Is this the same Mary? Any, any, no, 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 no. This is another Mary. Enemy of Elizabeth, kaise ho sakti hai? that was so early. Ye James, hai na? Uska baap ka baap ki maadhi wo meri. <laughs> Mary, who was the enemy of Elizabeth, had a son, James the first. That man had a son, Charles the Two had a son, Charles the first. That man had a son, James the second. That man had a daughter, Mary. Did you understand? <laughs> okay. Compliment break is over. The statement, literature of each nation depends on temple. Think, make me think of Macaulay putting down Indian literature and education. Yes. Thank you for thinking about Macaulay. Macaulay Kushwa. Let me mute you and continue. She are. <laughs> Let me continue. Okay. Dryden's poetry. Early poetry of Dryden is historical laudatory. Laudatory means in praise of somebody or something. Early poetry of Dryden is historical. And also laudatory, praising. Dryden's best poetry came later. It is satirical. There are only two original satires that he wrote, Medal and McFleckno. All the other works of Dryden are derived from somewhere or the other. Dryden wrote two original satires. Clear, everybody? The Medal and McFleckno. Absalom and Okuchofil is not original. It is based on New Testament. In Dryden's poetry, he offers no emotional excitement or intellectual complexities. Dryden does not offer any emotional excitement or intellectual complexities. <laughs> Did you understand? <laughs> he speaks in a very plain manner, factual, clear, concentrated expression. And he initiated neoclassicism in poetry after Johnson. Dryden initiated neoclassicism in poetry. After Johnson's time, Ben Johnson's time, neoclassicism for the first time comes in Dryden. So the first poem of Dryden is heroic stanzas on the death of Oliver Cromwell. Oliver Cromwell had died and Dryden wrote heroic stanzas on the death of Oliver Cromwell. It is the first major poem. It is written in quatrains in alternate rhyme. These quatrains are a meter that he got from Davinan's Gondibert. Quatrains, four lines. 
he does not attack royalty he does not mention cromwell's religion he is very careful in when talking about cromwell immediately after that he wrote about cromwell's enemy charles pehle to aisa abhi to aisa <laughs> like religious lady and hind and the panther pehle cromwell ke bare mein likha uske baad uska enemy charles ke bare mein kya hai dryden astria redux is a royalist panegyric that means eulogy or praise it is written in heroic couplets with a liberal sprinkling of similes and metaphors similes and metaphors are everywhere in astria redux he talks about rome and ideas of returning to a golden age under augustus caesar he wrote heroic stands as praising cromwell now he is writing astria redux praising charles heroic stands as praising cromwell astria redux praising charles heroic stands as praising cromwell astria redux praising charles samuel johnson said are logo isko dryden ko opportunist mat bolo don't say dryden is an opportunist because if dryden changed he changed with the nation not only dryden even the nation had changed at that time na the nation changed dryden also changed at first nation wanted oliver cromwell then nation wanted charles listen he wrote another poem for charles to his sacred majesty a panegyric on his coronation another poem also for charles he wrote ye to nahi hai encyclopedia mein i learned this later when charles died dryden wrote tri nodia augustalis augustus means emperor tri nadi for emperor or death song for emperor that is the meaning will you remember guys is it clear guys then came dryden's poem annus mirabilis it means the wonderful year maybe guys 2023 is your annus mirabilis because you study all this and then you pass that isn't it your annus mirabilis annus mirabilis 1667 What is the meaning of that phrase "annus mirabilis"? It means wonderful year, and it is about the year sixteen sixty six. Dryden wrote "annus mirabilis" about the year sixteen sixty six. One minute, sixteen sixty six was considered to be the year of the devil. Sixteen sixty six was considered to be the year of the devil. a year beset with calamities there was a great fire of london naval war with the dutch so many calamities then why did dryden call it wonderful year because greater calamities were not there the world did not end so dryden calls it the wonderful year dryden said greater disaster was not there mai to zinda reh gaya to miraculous year it is wonderful year it is did you understand dryden said greater disaster was not there so it is wonderful year 1666 this poem is an ambitious poem in 304 quatrains quatrains then later dekho 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 Annus Mirabilis is sixteen sixty six, and Absalom and Achitophel is sixteen eighty one. In the between years, in between years, what was Dryden doing? Dryden was writing drama. Dryden was writing drama. Okay, guys, Absalom and Achitophel, Medal, Mac Lucknow, all these will be. in detailed form recordings because i will tell you more than what is there in the encyclopedia and in the pdf okay main topics i want to teach you like that so 
written after 15 years of writing plays. He entered the realm of satirical and argumentative verse. He wrote a juvenile in satire, Absalom and Akitophel. All this I'll explain in the video. Absalom and Akitophel is in heroic couplets. It has admirably controlled verse, balanced phrases. The poem celebrates Absalom and Akitophel, celebrates Charles's victory over his enemies in the exclusion crisis. You, you know the story in the exclusion crisis. Uh, Charles and James, his brother, had defeated the Whigs. Charles and James had defeated the Whigs, remember? So this was a poem to encourage Charles's illegitimate son, the Duke of Monmouth, to claim the throne. The Whigs wanted to exclude the brother and make Monmouth the king. Dryden took the Tory side. You know that already I told you this. Dryden emerges as a champion of monarchy. I told you all this. Again, I will tell you later. So the, all these characters are there. They go, Absalom is Monmouth. Akitophel is Shaftesbury. They go, David is Charles. Zimri is Buckingham. Will you remember these? Read this before the next class. There go, Monmouth Rebellion ka picture. Second part of Absalom and Akitophel was written by Nahum Tate. There, you know, there Shadwell is satirized as Og. Once they asked in net in detail about it. Doig is Alkana Settle, another bad poet. When I teach you, I'll explain. Absalom and Akitophel appeared about a week before Shaftesbury was tried and imprisoned. Remember, Shaftesbury was imprisoned. All the supporters of Shaftesbury wore a medal. Kaha gaya mera medal? Taradang medal. They wore supporting Shaftesbury. Dryden is making fun of that medal. Did you understand? Dryden is making fun of the wigs and their medal. That is how, why, how he wrote the medal. Uh, Absalom and Akitophel appeared about a week before Shaftesbury was tried and imprisoned on a charge of treason. There was tremendous excitement over this. Shaftesbury was later acquitted to celebrate this victory. Dear friends, I am teaching my paid course students. Accidentally, I went live, but it is Felix Kulpa, fortunate mistake. This is our paid course. I will change the setting of the video soon. But I'm so glad that all of you in YouTube are listening to us. We are talking about Dryden. We are talking about Dryden's satires. Absalom and Akitophel, the medal and Macfleck. No. Absalom and Akitophel attacked Shaftesbury for supporting Monmouth. Absalom is Monmouth. Akitophel is Shaftesbury. Did you understand? And at that time, Shaftesbury got imprisoned. Shaftesbury is in prison. And all Shaftesbury's friends tried to release him. And Shaftesbury got released from prison. At that time, Shaftesbury's followers celebrated it with a medal. On one side, it was Shaftesbury's face. On the other side, it was the picture of London. Everybody wore it. Dryden's enemies, the Whigs. Dryden is Tory. And Dryden wrote the medal, making fun of this medal. Did you understand? Shaftesbury supported, wore this medal. Dryden wrote the medal, a single minded and savage attack on Shaftesbury. The medal was written in 1682. The year of religio leci, that also 1682. I already said that. <gasps> they go medal. Shaftesbury, London. London, Shaftesbury. Clear? The medal is subtitled The Satire Against Sedition. Sedition, Matlab, Rajya Droham. That means anti national activity. The medal opens with. Epistle to the Whigs. Dryden is making fun of the Whigs and their medal. 
epistle to the wigs, dried and roads. Shadwell did not keep quiet. Shadwell is supporter of Shaftesbury. Shadwell responded with the Medal of John Base, where he attacked Dryden. Dryden's medal has epistle to the Whigs. Shadwell's medal of John Base has epistle to the Tories. He is making fun of the Tories, Shadwell. Will you remember? Is it clear? So the medal, after that, the medal of John Base by Shadwell. Will Dryden keep quiet? When Shaftesbury attacks Dryden, will Dryden keep quiet? Batao! Kabhi nahi! Dryden wrote, Mac Flecknow. Dryden wrote, Mac Flecknow in reply to Shadwell. In medal, there is didactic element. Bahut zyada sikhata hai. He's teaching too much. Like in Absalom and Akitofel, didactic. In the medal, Shaftesbury is the satanic snake. He is tempting the poor English people. The English subjects are like Eve. Shaftesbury is a satanic snake. And he is cursed for persuading the Eve-like English subjects to commit the sin against the Adamic King Charles. Clear? I will explain everything. Shadwell's reply to the medal is the medal of John Bayes. It is coarse and brutal. John Bayes in the title is Dryden. John Bayes, Bayes matlab poet laureate. John Bayes is John Dryden. And Bayes is a character in the rehearsal also of Buckingham. Dryden replied with Mac Fleck. No, Dryden, chup nahi rai sakta. He could not keep quiet. He wrote Mac Fleck. No, same year. 1682 itself. He did not waste time. Dryden's method is to be not to belittle directly, but to make his object great in ridiculous ways. Dryden made Shadwell look very great and made him look ridiculous. Shadwell is becoming a king, but he is the king of dullness. Did you understand? Mac Fleck, no, I, I'm not going to explain. I will teach you in the recording. Just here they go. It is subtitled, A Satire About, A Satire Upon the True Blue Protestant Poet T.S. Mac Fleck, no, means son of Fleck, no. Mac in Irish means son. And it influenced Pope's Dunciate. Shadwell they go. Yeah, hey, Shadwell. Satirized as Og in the second part of Absalom and Akitophel. Bataina. Mac Flecknow is a mock epic. Mock epic. Abine Bataungi. Video man. Because I want to read first. And in Mac Flecknow, there is Shadwell's coronation scene. Coronation scene is there. All that I will explain in the video. Shadwell gives a lengthy speech, which is so funny. And at the end, Shadwell dies. And then in the same year, there is religio lechi or a layman's faith. This also I will make in the video. It is his discourse on religion supporting Anglicanism. You should read before you watch the video. Dryden converted to Catholicism in 1689. Dryden converted from Anglicanism to Catholicism to support King James II. Are you following me, everybody? Are you tired? Dryden uh, converted to Catholicism. And uh, it is believed that Dryden converted because he wanted authority. He wanted order. That is why he converted. When the Protestant Mary and William came to power, Dryden lost all his offices. When the Protestant Mary and William came to power, Dryden lost all his offices. His poet laureateship, uh, historiographer, royalship, everything was lost. But after converting to Catholicism, Dryden wrote The Hind and the Panther. 
I will explain in the video. Allegorical religious poem supporting Catholic Church. Hind and the Panther supporting Catholic Church because he had converted to Catholicism. Deco picture. Hind means deer. Panther. Deco Panther. And yo, after William of Orange and Mary came to power, Dryden lost Sabhi offices. Poet Laureate Davo lost it. Historiographer Royal Davo, who he lost. Bapre, both these were given to Shadwell. Can you imagine such an insult? At this time, time Dryden wrote just some translations. And it was published as Fables, Ancient and Modern. Fables, Ancient and Modern. That was his last work. Dryden died two months later. And Fables, Ancient and Modern, published in 1700, had a preface to the fables. Here he is translating Virgil, Homer, Lucretius, Ovid, Boccaccio, Chaucer. Yutunez are translations. All these translations he made. After the glorious revolution, he wrote some poems, lyrics, such as Song for St. Cecilia's Day, Alexander's Feast. Both these poems are free renderings of the Pindari Code. They are Pindari Codes. And these are in memory of St. Cecilia, patron saint of music. Music can move human emotions. That is the meaning. Okay. And uh, the Greeks, what is the story of Alexander's feast? The Greeks are celebrating their victory over the Persian king. And Timotheus, the musician, is called upon to sing. That is the story. He also wrote to the pious memory of Mrs. Anne Killigrew. Dryden wrote operas, the state of innocence based on paradise last. Deko, 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 iska shuruat mein iska title tha, the fall of angels and man in innocence. Did you know that? Then Troilus and Cressida, he wrote. That is also an opera. More are there. What, what are they? King Arthur or the British Worthy. Tempest or the Enchanted Island. Those, those are also there. King Arthur and the British Worthy, Tempest and the Enchanted Island. Yeah, Dena, I have taught you this before. That is why I did not add it here, but it should all be here. Let me add. Tempest or the Enchanted Island. And also King Arthur or the British Worthy. You know? Dryden wrote drama. Yo, yahan bana, yahan nahi hona In operas, it should be. Sorry, guys. Not here. In operas. Okay. Dryden's drama. Heroic drama. Remember, first wild gallant, then Indian emperor. Dryden wrote heroic plays, tragedies, comedies, tragic comedies. <laughs> Will you remember? I have given some titles. Some more are there. Only some titles I have given. Dryden said heroic play is the best form of play. This genre became prominent after restoration. But in the rehearsal, heroic play was parodied. All these heroic plays and blank verse tragedies, I will tell you in the audio. Sorry, video. Trident's prose includes essay of dramatic poesy. <coughs> this also I'll give you video in detail. Cries Eugenius Lysidius Neander. Four characters. Themes, ancient versus moderns. 
and Dryden is talking about a lot of contemporary issues here. Rhine versus blank verse. Modern French versus English restoration drama. Classical unities, etc. These are all themes I will explain in detail. Preface to the fables also. Here he talks about all the authors that he is translating. Homer, Virgil, Ovid, Boccaccio and Chaucer. He compares all these writers, sorry. He compares Homer and Virgil, Ovid and Chaucer. And about Chaucer's characters, what did he say? Here is God's plenty. Chaucer is a rough diamond that should be polished. Here he shines. What did Dr. Johnson say? Dryden is the father of English criticism. He founded a new versification about Dryden and English poetry. Dr. Johnson said he found it brick and left it marble. From the time of Dryden, it is apparent that English poetry has had no tendency to relapse into its former savageness. He rescued English poetry. Before the time of Dryden, there was no poetic diction, no system of words. Everything was gross. He found it brick and left it marble, said Johnson. Father of criticism, because he taught, it, taught us to determine upon principles the merits of composition. That is what Dr. Johnson said. So that brings us to the end of the section on Dryden. I am ending the live stream. Sorry. And uh, we will now talk.